All right, welcome everybody to short talk session number three. Um, my name is Megan Peters. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist at the University of California, Irvine in Southern California. And today it is my pleasure to host uh, the third short talk session, which is three short talks from some wonderful speakers. So we have Arya Wang, Minakshi Kosla, and Benjamin Pedigo. And uh, without any further ado, why don't we just go ahead and get started with Arya's talk. So please, Arya, take it away. The stage is yours. Cool, thank you. Uh, so today I'm gonna uh, tell you guys a little bit about how image embeddings informed by natural language in can improve predictions and understanding of human higher level visual cortex. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Mike Tar and Leila Wahabi. Um, so just some backgrounds. So to understand the computation of higher level visual cortex, neural network based models has been uh, very popular due to its good performance in predicting neural data. So this is an uh, example of one of the um, probably most cited work by Dan Yamans uh, in 2014, where um, they use a CNN that's trained on ImageNet to basically predict a monkey uh, visual response. Um, um, in neurons. And um, similarly, to understand the, the part of brain that process language, um, language inputs, people have also tried out different language models, including uh, non-network based ones, um, like an embedding model that's, um, for example, like word to vec or Goth models that basically featureize a word into an embedding vector. And then uh, that is used to uh, predict to um, predict how the semantic um, encoding in the brain and where that is happening. And uh, similarly, people have also used a model, uh, uh, neural network based language model, for example, like BERT um, in 2019 by, um, and BERT, which is a bi-directional transformer model that are um, trained for um, language modeling. So in this case, um, all these past efforts um, have been um, have, have been models that are only trained on one modality. For example, it is a, a vision based model, then it's only like, you know, taken, uh, uh, image or movie as input, and then it's doing purely a visual task. What about like multimodal models? Because um, we can, you know, humans, we are arguably multimodal agents. We process the semantic content of what we see along with the visual features. For example, like um, if I show you this image, you probably, you might not voice this in your head, but you pretty much got it that, oh, this kid is playing tennis or is learning uh, tennis from this other guy. And everything we see, we more or less have a way to describe it in language as well. So if I like, uh, if I show you this sentence, you probably will visualize something that's uh, similar to this image. Therefore, I think it makes sense to test how a multimodal model um, that does well in both vision and language tasks, um, and how that can be a vector proxy model for the brain. Um, in this case, uh, we try this uh, CLIP model that has been uh, recently really popular. Um, CLIP here stands for Contrastive Language and Image Pre-Training. So basically, uh, what, what this pre-training uh, does is that um, it takes in uh, image and image caption pair as, um, as, uh, in, in the training data, and it trains a separate text encoder and an image encoder. And the goal of this model is to force the embedding uh, the embeddings at the end of this um, either encoder to be as similar as possible. So um, this model has been extremely popular and it does like excellent job in, in terms of future learning. For example, if you just like enter like, oh, I want a picture of banana, it's able to find a banana or a drawing of banana um, with um, basically state of art performance. So in this case, uh, we, wanted to test how this, um, how well this like uh, representation from the clip models can do in predicting the brain. Um, and then the way that we're doing it is with a uh, voxelwise encoding model and on this uh, new uh, big uh, fMRI data set called natural scene data set NSD. Um, this just a few words about this data set. It's a 70 MRI um, fMRI uh, data set. Uh, it's collected over A subjects with uh, about 10,000 uh, pictures per subject and all, um, all of this image are from COCO data sets. So all of this um, inputs are natural images and the subjects are fixated centrally and perform a long-term continuous recognition task on the image. So basically they're um, mostly just passively viewing um, the image on the scanner. And um, the way that um, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with this topic, uh, I can also, uh, so it's, here is basically how a um, voxel encoding model works. Um, basically, um, there's the input space, in this case, it will be the image, and then uh, in this case, it's, take, it's taking the input space and then uh, featureize it 
into a feature space and then a linear mapping, um, which in this case usually is a rich regression model, is built to uh, basically map from the feature space to the brain space. So with a uh, voxelized encoding model, we can get a sense of how different information uh, extracted by different feature spaces are represented throughout the brain uh, through the comparison of this um, encoding model performances. Um, so here, just a, some uh, kind of like a summary of, of what is being done um, in, in this project. Um, so first, we, we uh, we have the brain data set where image are shown to the brain and then uh, we have the fMRI responses correspond to each image and we um, test some baseline models uh, with with the clip model for example in this case um, we met the um, we have the ResNet, um, which is a um, residual uh, convolutional neural network model that are uh, trained on um, image net task and uh, we, we fit this model to uh, predict brain response. That's our um, baseline. And then we compare that with how well a, a clip image encoder um, do. And uh, since each image also come with a caption in the COCO data set, we can um, also featureize the caption with the clip text encoder and map that uh, to predict brain response. And we compare that with uh, a BERT model, uh, which is um, the uh, the transformer model that I mentioned before. So in this case, both the ResNet and BERT are um, sync, like are models that are only trained on single modality and CLIPS are the uh, multimodal model for comparison. And uh, before I show you the results, um, I, I'm gonna explain a little bit of the way that I'm showing the results. In this case, um, all the encoding performance are gonna show in flat maps. So um, flat maps are just um, basically, this is the brain um, and they're like some value that are plotted in the brain. And you can imagine, you know, you have a, a ball of newspaper like crumbled and how, what is the, one of the best way or easier way to visualize how um, model prediction um, layout in the brain is basically to like inflate them um, and then flatten them out. So I'm gonna show all my results um, in this like flat map format. Um, nope. Um, so here it's um, the amount of variance a clip image encoder uh, can explain uh, in brain responses. So um, here is a hot map and all the values are R squares uh, up to 0.7. And um, as you can see, um, like um, clip actually does, uh, if you, I guess if you ever work with encoding model or uh, fMRI data, so this is like really, really good performance in terms of R square. And just to give you a sense of where uh, the, what are the areas, areas that are being uh, predicted. So um, here are some RIs for references. So as, as you can see, the um, kind of the um, areas that gets the maximum performance are around like where the body RI is and then a little bit of phase and then place RIs. So this is to say that um, the clip model does really good in the uh, um, region of interest that we already know are cor um, that correspond to semantic categories. And um, we can look at how a text encoder uh, do in this case as well. So in this case, since the brain response are just to image, but we, um, but the model, what the model can see here are just the caption of the image. So, but as you can see, like this, this two performance map are more or less just um, the same, which is to say that um, the, the text encoder basically with only the text as input does almost as well as the uh, image encoder. This is largely due to the fact that clip basically forced the uh, embedding from the text encoder and the image encoder to be as similar as possible. Um, and we can also look at how across different layers of the image encoder, um, how, how that can uh, uh, predict the brain progressively. So in this case, each voxel in the brain is colored uh, by the layer index that, are, um, that basically predict, the, uh, predict that voxel well. Um, so in this case, you can see the early visual areas in the brain are predicted better by um, the lowest layers. And, and as you go from the posterior uh, region of the brain to more anterior region, it, you also have this nice progression across layers in CLIP. And um, in order to, um, so this is, this is the comparison that I uh, proposed earlier in the talk where uh, I, I compared a CLIP image encoder with a, a, a single model a single model model um, in this case is a um, ResNet that's trained to do um, Im image net classifications. In this case, it's a um, it's a unique variance difference map. So um, so basically, um, the red 
uh, the red, the voxel dark color red in this case indicates where um, there are more univariates explained by the clip in image encoder model. And the blue, uh, the voxel that are color blue are the voxels that have are way, uh, are explained better by the image net um, train ResNet model. And as we can see, outside of the primary or outside of the um, primary visual cortex, most of the uh, semantic areas um, that we know are predicted um, much better like uh, by clip in terms of unique variants. And um, this trend is also very consistent across subject. And we can uh, rep uh, replicate the same analysis between BERT and a clip test encoder. And in this case, uh, clip test encoder basically predict much um, better uh, than BERT um, uniformly, not only uh, not just in like the visual cortex, but also in the interior regions that are outside of visual cortex. Um, and also this trend is very consistent across subjects. Um, so outside of just predicting the brain well, um, we can also use this multimodal model as a visualization tool for different regions of the brain. So this is uh, basically what I what we already have given a caption. We can put it into a test, a clip test encoder, and uh, build the linear mapping to predict brain response. And in this case, we can fix this uh, linear mapping and just replace the input to the text encoder to anything literally. So we can say like, oh, what about a photo of a face? How how would that um, how like how would that activate, for example, the FFA region of the brain, which is known to um, to um, specialize in processing face and facial face information? So in this case, uh, we did basically that. We we try um, like a thousand uh, common English words and then look at how the um, text encode um, how the clip text encoder embedding. Uh, of these words can maximally activate each of this RI region. Um, and in this case, um, the best words that um, are the words that activate the um, FFA most are like person, smi person smile, year, um, laugh, child. And for bodies, we got a lot of action words like caught, moment, catch, happen, fight. And for uh, places, we got uh, like uh, place words like such as room, door, place, wall, floor, uh, et cetera. So this is just kind of a, a test of an idea of like how how good this um, this visualization method is. And compared to compared to a general, um, I guess, a, a traditional way where, you know, people would uh, either synthesize an image to maximize the brain area or to to basically rank the image to see which image maximize the brain area. This is also like just a basically alternative that's probably uh, more slightly more interpretable. And uh, in the interest of time, we did a lot. Um, I'm probably not going to go too into detail into why we think clip do better. But um, because this is actually, uh, we, we don't have a clear story yet. But in this case, this is just a, a guess. Basically, um, let's say we have this three image from visual features, probably will, we'll, uh, or, or, or a usual like image net train model, probably think that the first two image are more similar because you know you, you can see hands and they're like of the same scale and they you know they just visually look more or less similar but in this case if you're going to look into the semantic space maybe the second picture and the third picture are more similar because they're both about like people holding a Wii controller and playing video games in this case we, we think that clip might actually um the multimodal nature of clip is able to pull the um, second and third picture closer than a, a regular um, image-based model and in this case, we also did some control experiment um, um, to compare how a, a clip encoder of just the image category is able to compare, um, it's able to do compared to a clip encoder to, to the captions of the image. So in this case, we no longer have um, the caption as input, but just the, um, the objects in the image as input. So as you can see, it's actually not, it's actually not doing that much worse. This is to say that maybe caption alone is not like cannot provide a good enough explanation of why clip is a better model, um, but it, its leverage is mostly due to the fact that it's more is trained in a multimodal way. Uh, just to summarize, um, uh, we, we found that multimodal models such as clip provides a more effective way 
um, of predicting your responses, probably because the organization of visual representation and brain are influenced by high level semantics. And also this multimodal model allow for new ways to interpret brain areas. Um, and we are still investigate like, or trying to come up with theory of why clip representations are better. And uh, so far, what we know is that this is not due to architectural differences. For example, a uh, transformer image encoder or convolutional based um, image encoder has the same perform uh, encoding performances. And it's not due to the fact that uh, uh, the captions are used. And if you just use the object label um, in training, it, uh, uh, it has the same performance as well. And um, that's all I have. Thank you. And please uh, email me if you have more questions. Um, thanks. Great, thank you very much, Aria. Fantastic talk. Um, we have one question in the ask a question box, but in the interest of time, I think we will move on. But Aria, you can feel free to also type a text answer in the ask a question box as well. Um, and I also encourage everybody to join our Discord server and you can keep the conversation going offline at the end of the session too. So uh, thanks very much, Aria, for thank the you. fantastic talk. And I think we will then move on to our next speaker.